Streptopithalum superbam or superbam that got hit by the frost. You can see this one, that one, and that one came out with flying colors. This one came out with beautiful blue colors. So this is the one that got affected by the frost the most. Same area, same pot, same soil that they're grown in, and yet three was not affected by the frost, but the one in the center is the one that got affected by the frost. So if we go check at the back, the ones at the back here is slightly affected. This plant is really severely affected. This one is not affected and that one is not affected. At the back here as well, these are the latest babies. It's the same story. There are plants that can weather the frost better or weather the sun for that matter better than other plants so they are the same plants but this is what i talk about in my many videos of the different strain it's important to get a good strain if i were to propagate now i would avoid propagating this one and that one i would stick to these two and also this little baby here or even this one here but i will avoid getting a propagated baby or a strain from this one. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. My most beautiful <laughs> sedum clavatum. This one was out in the open and got hit by the frost. And so straight away, the very next day, I brought it in here to settle down and warm up again. But you can see that that one has not recovered fully yet. But the rest of the gang, see this ones, you can see from the back, at the back that there's translucency. The translucency tells me that that got affected by the frost or got frostbite. But the rest, the center, so this one here is actually really good. That's really good. So the rest of it is still all right. But overall, as a whole, if I were to propagate this sedum clavatum here, I'd probably just grow this and keep it somewhere where it's not going to get exposed to the frost. So I'm going to keep it away from the frost. So this one is all out in the open, more open than my pretty one, actually. And you can see that that has been badly damaged by the frost. Those pretty white ones, look at that pastel color. That's all mush. That's all going to turn to, that's really soft. Look, okay, I don't even want to touch it because it's so pretty. But anyway, I will. See, look, it's weeping. Look at the water that's in it. See? squirting so that's really and it has this acidic smell it's like a rotting or rotting fruit but anyway so most of it got hit by the frost but this ones there's still a few good bits in there that is not affected by the frost especially the covered ones so this one now is only a couple of years old so I'm going to still leave it here now in the protected area and they will grow back. So all of these ones here, I'm going to leave them and then wait and see whatever falls off, falls off and whatever grow, grows. But anyway, this can't be exposed to the full exposure, the full harshness of the frost and the sun it can handle the sun no problem but frost is a no 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 for this bunch of sedum clavatum and my oldest sedum clavatum in this arrangement which is also quite in the open i would say this is the same exposure as my first sedum clavatum or the prettiest one that i've shown you so this one is my oldest sedum clavatum so it's actually how old are you now almost five years old aren't you they're five about five years old and yet this one is nice and healthy and not a single frostbite 
and this is already a baby from that mummy, Sedum clavatum. Any plant that I get from that has become frost hardy. And these two, so the one I just showed you and this one, are the two examples of that one. My Crassula calico kitten over here, in this arrangement, those brown spots on top, they got hit by the frost. But last year, this was badly affected by the frost. There's only a couple of bits left. But then I left it and it grew and it grew and it grew. And look how much calico kitten I have now. But this one's now the brown spots. I am not removing them because they will now dry up and they will serve as a protection for the coming frost. So we're, we're not even winter yet. We're just, or at the end of autumn, which is really now has become the beginning of winter because we got frost all of a sudden. So they're still forecast one degrees or zero, I think for the next coming days, but it's overcast and cloudy. So I'd say that will give the plant some time to recover. The new babies are not affected by the frost at all. Even my Atlantis or my, oh look, the bees, look at the bees. This is the reason why you shouldn't spray um, all that horrible stuff in your chemicals, in your succulents, because even though there's no flowers, the bees think that it's flowers. Look at that, see, look at that, see? So now if you spray that stuff there, then they're gonna die and we're gonna end up with no bees so oh that subcarimbosa lau 026 is look how pretty that one is there so this one i think peach pride or peaches and cream something you know peaches peach pride or peaches and cream one of them but let's just stick to atlantis so the atlantis is doing really well the one that was affected by the frost really really bad was my jamaican sunset look what happened to my jamaican sunset so that one is still good but this one is like 50 50 that one will be dead Maybe this one is 75, 25, 25, good, 75, dead. And this one is 90% dead and 10% alive. So <laughs> if there's life, there's hope. So I don't touch it. I leave it. I put it out. I will put it in here now. I took it out from the horrible open area and so hopefully this will recover the rest of the ones in the bottom i have no problems or no worries that they will recover but the rest of it those ones up the top they might need to get chop chop but for now i'm gonna leave them until springtime the suyun my achiveria suyun that was out in the open look what happened to it the rest of it so this one went purple but now it's recovering you can see so they will fall off the leaves will dry up eventually and fall off so I keep it out of the element now so this still will get afternoon sun but it doesn't get morning sun or midday sun only sort of partial afternoon sun a couple of hours direct sunlight but this is quite a brightly lit area so that's where I keep it now until springtime and we'll see what she looks like she will look like the other one which got affected by the frost as well this one got affected by the frost last year as well but it recovered and now i put it again through the ring i put it through the frost again and then i have no problem that will recover but if i leave this outside for the rest of the remaining of the three months of winter then it will definitely die and it's going to take maybe a couple of years before the new sprouts and new babies come out from the base of it. So Suyun is not frost hardy at all. So keep it safe. Put it somewhere where you can enjoy its beauty. A lot of direct sun, even indoors, is better than having it outdoors. So this is one plant that you can keep indoors and will look beautiful. My candy got hit by the frost, the little bits on the tips. See, look at that. So I'm going to keep my candy. <laughs> my candy. Um, I'm going to leave my candy out here where it's sort of, oh, look, where the calico kitten is. So this is part of a little bit of calico kitten or Crassula pelucida variegata because it says Crassula pelucida variegata. So I do remember a lot of plants and a lot of you because like, how could you remember all of that? Because I have labels. So it's like, so as much as possible, Haworthia pygmaea forma crystallina over here, that label stays there. But then if I were to remove that label, 
label, then I normally put a label uh, tag or like that one there. Or sometimes I put the label under the pots so I name them and then that way they don't fade out or wash off. My big beautiful kante that was here, I think it was number two. So this is, what number are you? Never mind. Um, I decided to leave this one here because it's only small plus it's got those leaves covering it from my loquat tree. So I thought I'd leave that one there so you've got covering or protection from the top a little bit because it's in my 50% UV zone area so you've got a bit of shade cloth covering and but they still get affected by the frost believe me but they don't die but that one I'm still gonna leave that there because I want it to grow small now I replace the dust area here I replace it with my very frost hardy Monroe and look how big that Monroe is it's huge look you don't believe me like that is a big 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 come here show me your face oh my god that's a huge Monroe beautiful plant now this barbellion here the Caranculata they're not as frost hardy but this one has already seen two frosts so this is going to be the third year for this one so I'm still going to leave this one here I'm not moving that at all because I've got another barbellion but this is the prettiest of all my barbellion but it doesn't matter so we're going to wing it we'll leave it there and see how it goes the rest of the gang they're all growing here nicely not affected by the frost and my bluebirds look at the three bluebirds the three Marias are slowly uh, should I say three Marios because the bluebird the, the more masculine I think I don't like putting labels <laughs> on my plant is a double meaning by the way they are retracting they're getting shorter or stumpier and more colorful and prettier and this area here so from the Suyun spot I already replace it with my beautiful dud layer and nocturne that one is corduroy I put another what are you Ben Badis Leticia and bees knees got partly affected by the frost you can see that one there it's affected by the frost but the rest of it is not so I decided to leave it plus I've got plenty of bees knees and they're quite easy to grow and my most beautiful apis I am obsessed with this plant but this is the only apis I've got that's grown in this small pot most of them I'm still propagating in the garden when I say propagating I want them to grow fast and big and fast really quick so I've got them growing in the garden and eventually I will get some and put it in the pot to grow it like this ones and this is uh, one of my video plant haul that I got somewhere and this is not a red edge this is already a hybrid the leaves are quite large so I'm going to compare it with my lipstick here so that's my standard lipstick and this two are definitely not a lipstick they are huge the leaves are really large and short and stout so look at that one so same age plant that one the lipstick there and this ones and yet these ones are just stumpy oh that one is uh, an ebony so this one I would say this is already a cross of probably corduroy or amestro I can see some amestro in it so maybe an amestro and red edge cross for that one but very frost hardy Setosa variety rondelli, the little hairy, little cute hairy thingy tips. Look at that, so beautiful. And the color is, oh my goodness, it's just, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Is that blurry? I can't see. So that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. This is the first year I've exposed it to summer, summer sun, and now winter sun, and see how she goes. And so far, she's doing really well. And the rest of the gang, that's it. It's all good, beautiful, very hardy. Echeveria is very hardy plant. And my aloe, look at this aloe, beautiful. My coral aloe, it's beautiful. Oh, look at that, so large. Like, and it gets hit by the frost a little bit, but nah, it recovers. And this one got hit by the frost oh, a little bit, look, but the rest of it, the pink ones, oh, are beautiful. They're not affected. So I think when they're still green like that, they get affected by the frost. But the minute they turn 
uh, yellowy, pink, purple, <laughs> they become frost hardy. That's definitely a plant that I will put in my garden. I had my lily pad growing in this spot and it got affected by the frost a little bit, which was expected. So I already moved it and then this one I bump it up. So I, it was there before and I put it up. And my Ionium Arboreum that was in here, look, I turned the pot over on the other side. So this is my lavender. Oh, variegated lavender smells so nice. But yet these Arboreums, look at that. Oh, they got affected by the frost. So this one is definitely not frost hardy and it's not going to go into my garden. I kept calling this Arboreum because of the, the Arboreum, but there's a specific name for that one. But anyway, I can't think of it right now, so I'll get back to it. But... Grenovia that's in this spot here it got slightly affected by the frost look at that the mummy leaves the center is still good that's perfect and then it starts getting affected here there and the babies are okay in the bottom except that one there and this baby as well that I propagated from that is doing fine here so I'm still gonna leave that there and if it dies it dies if it doesn't matter my pretty sunburst, this one, you can see that got affected by the frost. So now I'm still putting it out here, but in my 50% UV covered area. So it's a difference of being out in the open and having shade cloth. So if you have a bit of shade cloth, you're already increasing the frost hardiness by 50%. So this will stay here now and that will survive here. My Ionium Kiwi that was under the tree that was outside that's supposed to go in the garden. Yes, they got hit by the frost and I took it off from there and put it here in my 50% UV shade cloth area. And look, even my poor crested Ionium Sunburst, that's, the one in the bottom is good, but the one at the top, it's affected, but it's not dead. Okay, well, there's life, just hope. So, well, in a few months time, it's going to recover. And then this one, the top of this Ionium Kiwi is sort of half dead, but the rest of it, that will recover. I have no qualms at all or no problem that it will recover. But speaking of recovering, so this is the sunburst uh, that is up the top that was quite open and also with my biggest sedum clavatum so it's still alive but this sedum clavatum this is actually propagated from my hardy plant now the hardy mummy and look there's only one that i can see that's affected see that one that's dead so this is a good strain to get babies from so when this is the sibling of that one now which is four years old now the sunburst is badly hit or oh, this is the crested one and you can see it's all uh, the it lost its variegation or coloring it all just went yellow which means it's gonna die no it's not so it's gonna survive if I don't leave it out on the top. So my Ionium lily pad as well. Look, kissed by the frost. <laughs> so, but it looks so pretty. It's got all those dark, it got dark tips now. And even what, right inside there, that got affected by the frost. See, you can still see it hasn't thawed out. That was thawed out in the center of it. I'm still like, I'm still frozen poor thing I should give you a jacket or something but this same plant this one was growing out here before so I had it growing in this area last year and it has weathered the frost it survived it but now putting it that's why I thought oh I can expose it but no they are only hardy to say minus four <laughs> because I think we got minus five. That one degree matters. So my last year it experienced minus seven in this area. But again, it's position. So if you have partial covering, so it's sort of you create a microclimate for your succulents. All my succulents are grown outside, but they have bushes 
and other succulents like this one sort of protecting them. I have a window saying, hello, how are you? And I'm all rugged up because it's cold. And so this one, this, this shelf here, it's, I've created a microclimate for my succulents to grow. So that's why they're able to handle the sun and also the frost and the occasional snow. They can sort of recover, but my <laughs> lemon tree needs a lot of water. So the leaves are curling up because, and it's going yellow, it's because it needs a lot of water. But I've got my Francesco Baldi leaves that I just threw in there and then uh, they go, they're growing crazy. So I need to put this into the garden, into some soil that's permanently getting a lot of water, not in this pot. So anyway, guys, that's it. So I hope I've given you an insight as to uh, how I grow and acclimatize my succulents. Oh yeah, that one, the Mendoza. Look, remember the Mendoza that was really badly affected? Nah, no problem. See, look at that. It's beautiful again. And this one got hit by the frost. My cool view. It will still be all right. Look at that one. It's so pretty. Some of them got battered and I'm sure it's because I forgot this one doesn't have hole. Oh my goodness. I just remembered. <gasps> Oh, it's sitting in water. Oh, poor thing. Oh my goodness, I'm a terrible, terrible mother. If you put them in ice, see, there's still water in there. So that's why this is, doesn't have any hole. And that's the reason why that poor thing is like shivering. <laughs> my jelly beans, look. Look, look now, okay. <laughs> that one is dead, the tips. Even that one that's really, really dead. But the rest of it is fine. That one's dead, sort of half dead. That one is fine. And, okay, slowly, 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 slowly. So I just turn 180 degrees on this side. This one doesn't get affected at all. Same plant, same area. In, actually, that's in my master succulent soil mix. And then the other one is in my advanced soil mix. And this one has fared much better because you know why? because that is really, really dry and I had double, I gave it some insulation, see look, it's double, triple uh, pot now and that's doubly insulated, whereas this one is no insulation as, uh, at all, although the pot looks porous outside, inside it's a ceramic pot, so it, it's able to hold certain amount of moisture. So there you go guys, that's it. So and those ones, that's all half dead. The top is alive, the bottom are all dead. Okay, long video again. So now this one, after I did that, I'll put it back here. Oh, poor thing, I should really drain you out. Okay, you can stay there, you'll be fine.